And um, thank you to, to the organizers, especially to Maria Cecile for leading this process and bring everyone together in this ne next phase for Jam Rise. So, so I think it's, um, it's very exciting uh, to be here today with, with all of you again, <laughs> you know, and to keep on working together. So we've been talking about this silent pandemic and uh, as Lisa was mentioning, and I think Dominique was really showing with the data, you know, is here among us. The burden is very high. We just don't see it. And, uh, and it was good that you put a, a, a cancer patient face. Uh, you know, cancer, I mean, the second lead um, uh, element of mortality in cancer patients is antimicrobial resistance. There's a massive percentage of the burden of cancer patients that is due to antimicrobial resistance. And, um, and it's super underfunded. If we look at the levels of funding for research on antimicrobial resistance and you compare with cancer, we are more than three times underfunded. So therefore, when you think that it's a leading cause in cancer uh, patients' mortality and all cancer treatments needs antibiotics, so we need to think on how we can call, how to make a strong call that we really need more tools and more resources to support research to bring not only new treatments, but also kinds of evidence data that we need to create new interventions to prevent resistance and to keep the current antibiotics working. So in GPMR, the last uh, few years, we've been working together with over 30 countries all over the world to really mobilize national funding, to really be able to support research together at the global stage and to create um, a new community on antimicrobial resistance. And the record resistance community is small, so it's about how we can bring all these researchers together, how we can mobilize this, and how we can support um, new tools. So in the last uh, years, we've been really supporting not only the, th the development of new therapeutics, uh, new treatments, and diagnostic tools, but also to gather evidence on tr transmission, on environment, transmission, uh, dynamics, uh, surveillance tools, etc. You know, we need to think in a comprehensive and uh, way, and we have been seeing that, especially at national level, most of the funding has been going to therapeutics, so we're really trying to address those gaps in the landscape and try to be able to support uh, that research. So this was what we've been doing in the last years, you know, mobilizing globally these 170 million euros, but when we talk about these small communities and these small funding, I just want to make a small update on how we work together globally in this field of research. So here this slide shows you a bit what we're doing together with other international research funders. There's not many of us. One of us is, is here, Dipali, from the Amar Fund. So really how this research that we are supporting fits into the next research for the other funders and how we are feeding the pipeline on antimicrobials, on specifically on antibiotics. The pipeline is really thin. There's almost nothing there, only a few handful of candidates. So we really need to work together and to see how the different funders the scheme supports each other in this. So from our side in the last years, we've been supporting uh, uh, new antimicrobials development and we have identified new leads and filed several patents. So this project portfolio that we've been supporting, we are happy now to see how it goes to the next funding in the development uh, phases in the pipeline. So this is important to us to see how these resource mobilizations link to each other internationally and how we move forward. But we not only focus on, on new treatments, but also on other areas. So I just want to give you a couple of highlights of other areas that we are supporting and we have uh, projects that I think is important for all of you. So we've been supporting a lot of projects in the area of interventions and really like specific applications. And we also look in not only at funded projects, but also we monitor them and we look of the results and the outcomes of those projects and how we can facilitate the uptake of those by uh, at the national level, by the health agencies, by the medicament agencies. It's a very interesting, I'm very happy to be here today and to, to create this collaboration with John Rye on how we can um, you know, create this link about the research results 
and how we can move forward into the uptake of those. So we have support on, on, on interventions, but also on, on surveillance, and with very interesting uh, guidelines, platforms, uh, standardization processes, and we have seen how this has been taken up by, um, by the colleagues at WHO and colleagues in, in different countries. And we did in the last January uh, one, we did a joint workshop together regarding surveillance, which was very successful, and hope that this is what we are trying to see. It's not only funding research, it's not some abstract research out there, but we are really looking forward this uptake uh, and to have a really impact on the patients and on the ground. And at the moment we have an open call on intervention, so this also to, uh, you know, to, to engage people, to, we have funding calls every year. So in this year's on interventions. And just to finalize a bit, what is the next step? So we've been mobilizing in GPIMR in the last uh, years about 120 million euros, and now next year we are going to start a new phase, a new stage, which is going to be the transformation of GPMR into the One Health IMR partnership. And here what we are going to be doing is to work closely together as a key partner with the European Commission, with Digital Research, which we, they will be, will be co-funding a new research program together with member states and the European Commission, and therefore we are going to over double our budget. So we estimate for the next seven years to have a budget of 330 million euros. So it means that we are going to really uh, mobilize more funding and to be more ambitious in the type of research that we are going to be able to support in the next coming years. So as you can see, I just want to showcase a bit the, the scope of all the countries that we have on board. So it's not only the EU countries or associated countries, but we really work very closely together with countries outside Europe that we also fund together with them, like Canada, or Australia, or um, South Africa. So, and now we are uh, basically uh, embarking new countries for this next phase, and I'm happy I just got the letters from Bulgaria, which was one of the last countries uh, to have on board that they are joining, and uh, last, last week I was in Malta with several of, of our colleagues, and I was talking with the, with the Malta government, and they increased their commitment for, for the future, their financial commitment. So we are really right now in this phase of gathering commitments and gathering momentum. And that's very much linked also with the UNGA resolution process that we are embarking and how the UNGA resolution will also drive this level of commitment and also what do we need from research, which kind of evidence we need, and these things that we need to be supporting in, in the coming years. So the, the One Health IMR Partnership, or HIMR, we will start next year, is really to continue to focus in boosting research development and innovation in a One Health approach. So we are really looking at you know, the prevention area, the novel solution area, the diagnostic area, and also how we can uh, control the spread of resistance. So this is going to be the major areas, and we've been working together and develop um, research and innovation agenda that my colleague Sophie Gale uh, from France uh, has been leading this exercise in really how we can agree on common priorities worldwide and what we need to support on research. And we've been doing this together with the quadripartite in the last years in developing jointly the One Health um, Global Research Agenda and with the WHO well in the Human Health Agenda. So this international exercise in developing research priorities we've been doing together with them in order to make sure that we are going to be funding the next year is common uh, agreed uh, globally on what is the most important elements. So really to, um, to talk a bit about specifically what are we going to be supporting. So we are going to be supporting three major areas of work. So the focal areas which is going to be the prevention of emergence and spread. The second area is the strengthen of prudent use of antimicrobials and infection prevention and control. And the third area will be to provide innovative and cost-effective treatment options. So this will be an important big area on the treatment development. And we are going to be doing that through uh, four programs. Uh, one which will be the funding program, which will be that we will have these large uh, research goals like we have at the moment uh, to support really research and research networks globally. And then we will have, uh, in order to, we have seen this is not enough. We need to create more capacity. We need to increase the community. And a couple of days ago was uh, published a demolishing article explaining how the researchers are leaving the field, how we have less researchers than before on the IMR field, especially on clinical development, because there's no career path, there's no excitement, 
in the area. So we really need to focus not only in just feeding uh, the research to the few researchers that we have in the world, but also to create a new community and to provide a path. So therefore, we are going to establish a capacity strengthening uh, program to really see how we can engage the younger generation of researchers, how we can attract people to the field, how we can provide the training tools and all the tools needed to really we can advance in this field as well as we are going to establish a data sharing facilitation program as data, as we all know, and the role of artificial intelligence is becoming central to the field. So how we can do to really bring these data sets together, the research infrastructure is critical in these fields together. And finally, we will have an impact program, really looking, as I mentioned before, at the uptake of those results. Really, we can move forward on that and also how we can engage with the low resource setting countries and regions in the world because of course there's a global element and Europe cannot do this alone so we really looking at this outreach and really how we can translate also those research results into low resource settings. So this is going to be our job for the next years building on all the work done in the 10 years and, and moving forward with more resources and, and more uh, important tools and of course we will not work this in isolation, but also together in a multi-sectoral approach. You know, now Han is going to be talking after me, so we're also working together with the animal health sector. So it's about how we can push um, the elements forward. So thank you very much.